Let's talk about layering in watercolor painting. How many layers do we need to create a realistic painting with depth of space? I will be painting these apple tree flowers. This will also be a good exercise in painting white flowers on a dark background. I'm going to start on a slightly damp sheet of watercolor paper without any drawing. I don't want pencil lines interfering with my white flowers. What I'm going to do is just pick up some lemon yellow on a small brush and mark the centers of all the flowers. This four or five in the center will be my focal point. So they will be kind of main area of concentration. And with a flat brush and very diluted watercolor, I'm going to paint the shadows on these flowers. I will paint the dark background negatively around these flowers. So I really don't have to worry about the outline of the flowers for now. I will develop that in a later stage of my painting. For now, I just need to paint the light and light mid-tone areas in my composition. I'm also going to lay down some yellow, some lemon yellow under some leaves. You see the leaves in the focal point, a very warm green. To get that warm green, it's a good idea to start with a little bit of yellow that gives them warmth and that sunlight that illuminates those leaves. the areas that are further away from us. We can use a cooler green. This is Cascade Green by Daniel Smith. I'm mixing it with sap green to get variety of green in my painting. Green is a tricky color to paint and a lot of times if we use just one green it looks very monotonous and very natural because foliage and grasses have so many different shades of green we just absolutely have to try and capture that in our painting to achieve realism and the depth of space that is our goals for this painting <laughs> Using opera pink, some petals are not white, they have a very delicate shade of pink and also a little bit of purple. So I'm mixing opera pink with a cobalt blue to achieve that light purple color. I don't have that pigment, but it's easy for me to get it by mixing opera pink with cobalt blue. I'm roughly following the reference photo. I like the diagonal movement in it, but like I said, I will be concentrating mostly on these five flowers that are in the middle, that are the center point of the composition. Everything else I want to be painted very loosely and without too many details. So this is my first layer. I am keeping all the colors fairly light and transparent. The whole point of painting watercolor is to have transparency. With this style of painting, this kind of classic approach to watercolor, we want to preserve transparency. And in a few minutes, you will see how many layers of that transparent paint it will take to get to realistic three-dimensional result. Let's start darkening certain areas. I'm using a small brush because I want precision in the edges. I cannot mess up my white flowers. I will be using a little bit of opaque white at the last stage of my painting to make tiny little corrections. But for the most part, I want to preserve the white of the paper, like I said, for transparency and luminosity of my painting. And you see, even though I didn't draw anything, I drew my composition with a brush. This is my first layer. I'm going to let it dry. 
and we will proceed with the second layer. Now that I have a pretty good idea where I want things to be, where I want lighter and darker areas in my painting, I can help myself a little bit with pencil drawing. I am using a fairly firm pencil. This is HB. So the pencil lines will remain light and not bring kind of mud and dirt into my painting. My main concern again are the flowers. I'm going to just outline them to help myself verify the edges, find a few more details. And also I'm going to draw a few leaves that are again in the focal point, the, the leaves that surround the flowers. Everything else is not important. It's going to be very abstract, kind of loosely painted, so I don't need to draw anything on the perimeter of the painting. I'm preparing for the second layer of transparent watercolor. And here's something I discovered when I was just learning watercolor and that really helped me to make progress. Even though watercolor is transparent, it doesn't mean that we need to paint layers and layers of it. I think experienced artists will agree with me. Sometimes watercolor needs to be diluted with water and very light and transparent, but also it's important for darker areas to have saturated paint. So you see I mixed some dark color there on the side on my palette and I'm applying it in the areas of shadow that I see, the areas that I want to push away from us and that immediately creates a lot of contrast with my white flowers. The flowers where I have white paper or very light shadow. Using that saturated paint allows us to reduce the number of watercolor layers. We do need depth and we do need darkness and saturation and we can achieve it with multiple transparent layers multiple light layers but i noticed that the more transparent layers you apply the more you lose that luminosity of watercolor and if we apply dark saturated paint but only one maybe maximum two layers that luminosity is still there somehow that paper still shines through that layer of pigment so it's a little bit of a balancing act we do want intensity and saturation but at the same time we don't want to lose the transparency we don't want watercolor to become dull and opaque because that's the whole point while we're <laughs> struggling with this medium while we're trying to master it and learning how to use it is the transparency that unique quality that watercolor has so i'm working with a fairly small brush around the flowers because I want precision in my edges. I want hard edges where those white flowers stand out against the dark background. And I'm softening the edge opposite, that's away from the flowers with a big flat brush because I want that paint to soften and to mix with my background that I already painted. I don't want any hard edges on that side. And please weigh in in the comments on that subject. How many layers you usually paint? I see a lot of questions online. Watercolor artists are exchanging opinions. People say it depends on the result that you want to achieve on your painting style. And some people say, yes, I paint 15, 20 layers. Otherwise, you can't get the depth of space. Even though my conviction is that three, maximum four layers are usually sufficient. Let me know what's been your experience and what you usually do when you paint with watercolors. I'm mixing magenta permanent with cobalt blue and cascade green. Those three colors give me very intense, it's kind of purple color. I'm using it to paint those very dark areas that I see in the background. I also noticed that I need to modify it with a little more cascade green in some spots as well, where the leaves are slightly closer to us that purple doesn't work anymore. But that's easy to do. I'm just dropping a little bit of Cascade Green into that purple. And again, it gives me nice variation, color variation and visual interest. I'm painting around the lighter leaves, the ones where I applied yellow wash, the ones that are in the focal point around the flowers. I'm careful to leave them light. So I have to paint around them. So not just the flowers, but also some of the leaves need to be painted negatively. And there will also be some branches. And branches are tricky because they have a shadow on one side, but they're lighter on the other side. So the second layer is a little more involved than the first one because we need precision. 
we need to paint around our lighter areas. We're starting to develop the details. I'm not touching the flowers. I will work on them a little bit more later. So developing mid-tone and dark mid-tone areas for now. There in the upper left corner, like I said, this is out of focus already. I want to leave that area and also basically all my corners. I want to leave them very loosely painted. So I am not adding any hard edges there. That's how we get things out of focus. We are um, using soft edges there. Let's develop those shadows on the flowers a little more. Some of the petals are turned away from the light, so there will be shadow there using a small brush and working transparently. The advantage of working gradually on the whole painting is also that I'm always checking my tonal relationships. If I developed the flowers fully before I painted any of the background, I know some artists do that. Uh, they paint something completely and then they start thinking about the background. I think that's a lot harder to do because even if you make a background very dark, it might not be dark enough in relationship to the flower, which means the flowers might not look white anymore, but kind of gray or some other color. With watercolor, it's important to plan in advance because it's hard to make things lighter at later stages of the painting process. <music> important to bring a little bit of dark into the centers of the flowers because they're not a solid shape. We will see the dark background between the petals. And this was my second layer. I'm going to let it dry. With the third layer of watercolor, we will continue building the depth of space that we build using tonal relationships. And we will continue developing the details on our apple blossom branch. You see, I'm using smaller brushes. I lately started using two brushes at the same time when painting watercolor. I do that when I paint with opaque medium, but I find it helpful for watercolor as well. That way I can have two different colors at the same time, or I can have color on one brush and clean water on the other brush. And that saves me a little bit of time kind of washing the brush and it helps with water control as well. So right now I'm working on the leaves in the focal point. And I'm working on the background around those leaves. I'm trying to decide which areas I need to darken a little more and which areas I need to darken a lot. You see how much watercolor lightens, so I do not have that contrast, the depth of space that I want around my focal point. This photo was taken by a friend of mine, so it's not available online. I will post it in the community posts on my channel. So just click on the channel and then click on the community tab and go through the posts. You will see the reference photo if you would like to try it as well. And my friend Anna, she's a great photographer. So she took photos of the same apple tree several years ago, which I painted as well. That video is available on my channel. I'll leave you the link in the description. The technique there is a little bit different. So if you're curious to see the first apple blossom, you will have the link in the video description. And in that first painting, I used a lot more opaque white, I'll tell you in advance. And now I'm using it a lot more sparingly, even though there's nothing wrong with using opaque white, the result is going to be slightly different. You can compare the two. When we want to paint something dark, I already mentioned that in my opinion, it's a good idea to use saturated color, basically straight out of the wells with just a wet brush. But it's also a good idea to use a flat brush. It doesn't hold quite as much water as a round brush and we can achieve a lot more saturation, a lot more depth with less layers and preserve transparency. I know it sounds kind of counterproductive applying super saturated paint, but in my experience, that's how we preserve transparency. I found that leaves are a tricky subject. It seems like a very simple form, but they do have a lot of details and they have a lot of color variation. And all the leaves are different, obviously, and all different plants. I take time to kind of concentrate my attention on the reference photo for a minute or two to figure out what the leaves actually look like. 
Are the veins darker than the leaf itself? Is it all green or is there, are there some other colors? You see that leaf in front has a little bit of red in it, which is kind of unexpected for me. Also, there is a central vein, but the rest of the veins are not very visible. All those small details and characteristics actually give more realism to your painting because when the, even if people are not kind of botanists and they won't tell you what apple tree leaves look like, when they look at the painting, if the leaves are totally different, the painting will not ring true to them, I think. Having realistic flowers, let's say, and totally abstractly, schematically painted leaves, probably not going to work. I think at least in the focal point, then they need to be painted realistically as well. Tiny little shadows on the flowers and the petals towards the center are getting a little bit greener. So I'm applying a very transparent green wash. They're going very delicately, not over darken them, but there is a little bit of green tint there and constantly verifying the edges. That's what it's all about. Correctly painted edges, whether they're soft or hard. And if they're hard, they need to be precise. And I'm not a super patient person. So between the layers of watercolor, I stop and walk away from my painting to give myself a break from it. So I will kind of want to paint it again because if I get tired, I don't want to paint anymore. That means I'm going to start messing up important to take breaks and paint when you want to paint. Let's also work on the buds a little bit, give them a little more precision. A few of them are in the focal point. There are also some in the distance so they can be painted a lot looser and softer. And the distant leaves can be painted without touching the paper with just splattering. And after I splattered a couple of greens, I sprayed them from my spray bottle and I'm going to kind of distribute the paint a little better with my flat brush. The texture that splattering creates I think looks very much like distant foliage. Okay, this is the third layer. In my opinion, all I have left to do is add the highlights. I need to add a little bit of precision to the edges of my flowers. No matter how hard I try to paint them exactly, I lost a little bit of white. They still look kind of jagged. Also, the paper is not super white. My white ink is a lot wider than the paper. As the last step, my fourth step, I'm going to go through all the flowers and add the highlights. So this will be my fourth and last layer. It's not exactly watercolor, it's white ink, but this is all that was needed to create realistic and three-dimensional painting of apple blossom. And you might have noticed that my layers are coordinated with the tonal scale. I paint from light to dark, and with each layer I paint light mid-tones, mid-tones and dark mid-tones, and then the third layer is darks and the last step is highlights. I think that approach is easy to understand, easy to remember. And also this approach helps me to preserve transparency of my watercolor layers, helps me keep my pigments clear and transparent because the more layers we apply, the more we reduce transparency and the more there is a chance of creating muddy, opaque colors. small adjustments at the very end of the painting process. I toned my white ink with yellow and green and with two colors I corrected the edges of the leaves. Some of them are turned to the light with the edge, so the edge is very light and I could not achieve that when I was painting. I could have lifted color in those areas and waited for it to dry and then Maybe apply the light lemon yellow wash or something like that, but I think using tinted ink is a lot faster and it's not really noticeable in the final painting. I think it looks harmonious with the rest of the painting, which is finished now. I'm going to sign it and here's the final result. Let me know if you have any questions about layering watercolor and how do you feel about the final result? Hopefully you like it. Hopefully this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamirap Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!